the world has never changed this fast. The godfather of AI has just quit his job at Google and claims he regrets his work. He was the one who created the idea that made ChatGPT possible, and now he hates himself for it. Spotify is trying to figure out how to tackle AI copyright issues while still trying to innovate in the AI space. AI campaign ads are now a thing, and on this episode of AI Focus, we get into all of it, so buckle up. Oh, and stay till the end of the video to hear about the woman who cloned herself with AI and fooled her bank with the technology. Unfortunately, for the sane members of society, election season is coming up. Election time is already full of immature and or selfish adults who somehow feel they're competent enough to lead an entire country. And Joe Biden has announced his re-election campaign, and the Republican Party was waiting on that. The GOP has jumped all over AI with the first political campaign ad to use exclusively artificially intelligent tech. This ad is called Beat Biden and is supposed to be the imagining of what the re-election of Joe Biden would look like. It includes China's invasion of Taiwan, bank shutdowns, and the city of San Francisco being shut down due to crime. AI image generators like Stable Diffusion, DALI, and Midjourney have become extremely popular. Users just describe what they want to see in a prompt, and the image is generated. Fortunately for Republicans, most of America is still pretty unaware of just what AI can really do. But there are some clear giveaways in the ad to the trained eye. For one, Biden has the weird hands thing going on, and Kamala and Biden both have a smile that's showing too many visible teeth. These are the two signs you look for in AI-generated images. AI could be used more creatively, however, in the election. Imagine a chatbot texting you and urging you to vote, except the chatbot is trained on the personality of Donald Trump. The invent of the railroad, TV, and internet all change the way candidates connect to people, and generative AI is next in line. It will either increase accessibility to potential candidates, enhance misinformation, or both. Maybe there's no need to be nervous, but should we be nervous when someone known as the godfather of AI quits his job at Google and then announces that he regrets his work. The godfather of AI's name is Jeffrey Hinton, and he is a pioneer of the field. But he's also now the newest member of experts that claim that companies are racing us towards our doom with technologies like ChatGPT. Hinton worked for more than a decade at Google before quitting and said, I console myself with a normal excuse. If I hadn't done it, somebody else would have. If you let the industry leaders tell it, AI is the next big advancement right after the introduction of the World Wide Web and can lead to new areas of drug research and education, which may be true, but there are those inside the industry as well that think we may be digging our own graves. Hinton didn't sign the letter that called for the six-month pause on smarter AI training because he wanted to quit his job at Google first, but last month, he gave Google his resignation. On Thursday, he talked to Google CEO Sundar Pichai, and now he's sounding off. Google's chief scientist has come out and said that the company is still committed to a responsible approach to AI while boldly innovating, and the company doesn't want to lose any money, so their innovation will remain really bold. Hinton is a lifelong academic who, in 1972, came up with the idea of the neural network, a mathematical system that learns by analyzing data. Researchers at the time didn't think it was possible. In 2012, Hinton and two of his students, Ilya Sutskever and Alex Krzyzewski, built a neural network that could analyze thousands of photos and teach itself to identify common objects. Their system eventually led to the powerful language model ChatGPT and Ilya became the chief scientist at OpenAI. In 2018, Dr. Hinton won the Turing Award, otherwise known as the Nobel Prize for computing for their work on neural networks. Around this time, companies began developing neural networks that learned from huge amounts of text. Then last year, the amount of data used to train these systems got way bigger, and that's when Hinton saw the first red flag and felt that artificial intelligence was possibly surpassing human intelligence in some ways. At first, Google was protecting the world from technology that could potentially harm the world. But then Microsoft released its new Bing search engine, and Google threw safety right out the window. Hinton says companies are locked in a competition, and no company is backing down. Now the godfather of AI is afraid fake photos and videos will flood the internet, and no one will know what's real anymore. 
He also fears it will upend the job market, taking jobs away from paralegals, personal assistants, and translators. In the future, he thinks AI can pose a threat to humanity because of their ability to learn unexpected abilities from analyzing such large amounts of data. We now allow AI to generate and run code on its own. And this is why Hinton fears the classic killer robot possibility. He says regulation won't help either because scientists could be developing their tech in secret. He says our best bet is to hope the world's leading scientists collaborate on how to control the technology. Controlling AI tech is something the music industry is wrestling with now as we speak. But before we get into that, if you're enjoying this content and love to hear about all the latest AI news and updates, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. AI has had both very positive and very negative effects on the global streaming service Spotify, however. On one hand, Spotify has always been fond of AI. Take their new AI DJ feature for example, which offers personalized music selections introduced by a realistic sounding AI DJ. The feature was just rolled out in March and it's been gaining steam. While still being in beta, the feature has reached millions of users per week and is a positive result of Spotify's AI investment. The problem comes when people start using AI to clone voices of existing artists without their approval. This leads to copyright issues and other major complications for streaming platforms. Look at the fake Drake and Weekend song that went viral before being taken down from the streaming services. Universal Music Group came down pretty harsh on Spotify and asked them which side of history they wanted to be on, the side of human creative expression or fraud. It was a pretty heavy response, but there's a lot of money at stake here. When you have a Drake on your roster, it's a precious asset. You can't have random people releasing Drake songs whenever they want. On the Q1 2023 investor call, Spotify was asked how it would approach the problem in the future. Spotify CEO Daniel Ek responded by noting how fast moving this issue really is. First off, let's acknowledge that this is an incredibly fast moving and developing space. I don't think in my history with technology, I've ever seen anything moving as fast as the development of AI currently is at the moment. But he did point out his two goals for the situation. One, to encourage creative innovation and two, to protect existing work and artists. X says they're in discussions with labels and artists constantly to try and figure out how to strike that balance. He also said that AI progress is both really cool and scary. And I think that pretty much sums it up. The CEO also envisions a world where AI can help people create music without the need for complicated tools. For instance, a user could tell the AI to make a song more upbeat instead of having to know how to increase tempo with the software. Or people could even instruct AI to add guitars to the mix. The world would definitely be different if everyone had access to music creation. Surely there are some musical geniuses out there that could benefit from not having the hurdles to learning music production tools. Sure, there'll be a lot more crap out there, but the cream will rise to the top. We can see an AI powered song creation process in action here. The singer was asked to make a Drake and Katy Perry hit on the spot. Here, the AI writes the actual music first. Then the users list keywords that align with a certain theme. Those keywords are then put into ChatGPT, along with a prompt to write a song. The users record the vocals. Moonlight guides away until the break of dawn. In the night sky, I see my past, all the regret and the pain that I amassed. The final step is to dub the vocals with the fake Drake and Katy Perry vocals. The light is a canvas, wow. my dreams are born. <laughs> Regretting the pain that I am as for redemption is what I seek. <laughs> and, I and voila, a very, very mediocre version of a song by Drake and Katy Perry. This obviously sucks, but like I said, the cream will rise to the top. Now let's get to the AI clone. This woman named Joanna recorded 30 minutes of video and two hours of audio that Synthesia would use to train her clone. Thus, AI Joanna was born. The real Joanna asked ChatGPT to generate a TikTok script about an iOS tip written in the voice of Joanna Stern, and it worked pretty well. Then she used the clone in a work meeting where her co-workers quickly realized it wasn't the real Joanna due to her perfect posture and lack of wit. She then used Eleven Labs to create a voice clone and called her father to ask for his social security number. Her father said he knew it wasn't her because it sounded like a recording of her. But the voice is so good, it failed Chase's credit card voice biometric system. This means anyone can take hours of your voice, or Drake's, or Joe Biden's, to save and use to either get access to something or make a viral hit song. This tech is only getting better, 
and it's almost impossible to spot in some cases. But there's something called the Adobe-led Content Authenticity Initiative, where over 1,000 media and tech companies aim to create a nutrition label for media. All media on the internet may one day come with verifiable info attached, and this can't come soon enough. What are your thoughts on AI's effect on the world? Are you optimistic or pessimistic? Let me know in the comments below. Click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.